Okay. So, good morning uh, good morning sa inyo. So, malapit na yung ating lunch. Okay, but regardless of that, first of all, I uh, would like to say thank you po sa mga organizers natin dito sa event natin dito sa webinar natin. Okay, by um, the senior high school here in Cavite National High School. So, before anything else, um, okay, so I'm Art Palacios. So, I'm a faculty member of La Sal De La Salle University in Las Marinas and, of course, St. Dominic College of Asia in CORE. Um, I'm more on environmental science, yung aking pinaka-major field. So, I'm here, invited by your uh, professors para magbigay sa inyo ng ating information about ano ba yung tiyatawag nating watersheds. Okay? So, when you talk about watersheds, it's very important to us in a sense that uh, yung ating urban areas natin here in Cavite, Cavite City to be exact, is also part of it, okay? So generally, in this particular topic, papag-usapan natin yung importance ng mga watersheds, ano ba yung mga threats dito, and of course, what can we do about things that we are facing right now, okay? So first things first, okay, let me uh, give you an idea first about, uh, let me show you this particular illustration, okay? So this came from uh, an ecclesial, okay? Uh, Capital and Psychical ni Pope Francis, okay? Uh, entitled Laudato Si, noong May 24, 2015. Okay, so according to this particular uh, encyclical, uh, Bible encyclical, he said that we are faced not into two separate crises, one environmental and the other is social. But, remember this one, rather with one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. It means that hindi lang tayo nag-face ngayon yung tiyatawag nating environmental concerns or issues or whatsoever, but also we are facing, of course, yung mga social things sa ating paligid. Kasi nowadays, mapapansin natin, when you talk about the social media, we are greatly affected by these things. Of course, that's technology. Okay, so if ever there's technology, there's negative things about it, of course, there's, there are positive things about it. Okay, so mama, bibigyan ko kayo ng emphasis about how could we, uh, as as uh, as a person living in this society ano ba yung mga meron tayong pwedeng gawin para sa ating environment specifically sa ating mga watersheds and many more so i'm gonna leave you with this particular um quote coming from Pope francis ah, so that you could understand ano ba yung mga ibig ini ini ang assist nitong laudato si itself ha huh? okay so before anything else before i start with my main discussion about watershed let me show you first yung tinatawag na ting sustainable development goals so when you talk about the sustainable development goals, this one is yung 15-year uh, plan of every country included to the committee na nag-formulate uh, nag ng idea about these sustainable development goals. Actually, yung sustainable development goal, tinitakal namin yan sa subject na SDS. So maybe later on, if ever you went to college in many, or either sa inyo senior high school curriculum, may SDS dyan. So I guess you are familiar with these things. So these are the ultimate goals na target ng lahat ng mga country. Hindi naman lahat to be exact, but most country in their planet um, tackle up these things. Okay, this is the ultimate goal that we're gonna tackle up na kailangan natin ma-reach or meron tayong tatawag natin iniin natin para makuha natin or ma-achieve natin yan on 2030. So what, what is this Sustainable Development Goal? So Sustainable Development Goal, so it is the 17 goals of the future, the world's future to 2030. So it became uh, an simulation in 2015 and yung pinaka main target niya is on 2030. So usually from these 17 development goals, it is backed up with 169 detailed targets. Hindi ko na siya tatakal up, pero kada SDG po na yan, may mga specific na target niyan na target nating ma-reach. And of course, kasama rin po yan sa mga program natin, sa government natin. That is also uh, given to us by NANEDA itself. Eh, naka-indicate po yan doon. Kasi may mga indicators at may mga targets po yung ating SDG. So usually, in general, the goal of the sustainable development goals that we are included as our country, as a uh, 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 country, the Philippines, isa sa mga uh, uh, its, uh, ultimate goals includes eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. Kasi remember, when there is hunger, there's what you call poverty. And of course, as a third world country, alam naman natin na hunger is prevalent sa atin. So nasabi na rin naman kanina ng speaker natin, ano ba yung mga reasons ba at nagkaroon ng poverty dito and many more. But of course, these are great challenges to our country, not only for our government, but of course, para sa society rin po talaga. 
how could our government do its thing kung lagi natin silang babatik ng sinner whatsoever? Of course, sa, dapat tutulungan din natin sila on what we are. Of course, not everything is, um, sabi na natin, hindi naman lahat talaga um, naging approved sa atin. And many more, there are negative things, so there are positive things. But of course, let's stop the blame, ga- blame game to the exact. Let's do our part as a, as a individual, part of our society itself. Okay? So furthermore, uh, another goal ng ating SDG is of course, fight inequality. Of course, this include gender inequality, yung mga tao may disability, and many more. Isa rin po yan sa mga target na kailangan uh, ma-achieve natin sa sustainable development goal natin. At the same time, okay, one of the most important thing in this particular topic is of course, tackle up climate change. Kasi climate change is real. Okay, so one of the most... Um, uh, I guess it's one of the most uh, greatest reason bakit nagkaroon ng so many um, threats sa ating environment nowadays is because nagbabago ang klima natin. And of course, it's all natural. Yun nga lang because of the anthropogenic uh, activities ng mga tao, nakapa-accelerate natin yung tinatawag natin climate change natin. Furthermore, uh, of course, kailangan natin itong ma-achieve itong sustainable development para sa lahat not only for the youths, this also include uh, different sectors of our country, the government, the private uh, sectors, LGUs, NGOs, and so on and so forth. Para sa lahat po ito. From the word sustainable, ibig sabihin na may maintain natin yung katangian na yun all throughout, the, to, all throughout sa ating uh, plan to, for our development itself. As you said, um, let's stop the blame game. Let's just cooperate. Oo, mas tama rin batikusin sila. But regardless of that, do we do our, uh, do our part? We do our part to be exact. Okay? Gawin natin yung ating best para matulungan din natin yung ating society as a person living in our society itself. Okay? Furthermore, ano ba yung pinakamayin topic ko dito? Okay, so of course, in this topic, we'll talk about what is a watershed. Then of course, ano ba yung mga importance ng watershed sa atin? Then of course, ano ba yung mga threats sa watersheds? And of course, what can we do? to save our watersheds to bits. Okay. So first things first, let's define yung tawag natin watershed. So when you talk about a watershed, according to usgs.gov, it is an area that of land that drains all streams and rainfall to a common outlet such as outlaw of a reservoir, mouth of a bay, or any point along the stream channel. It means that, in general, pag sinabi natin watersheds, this includes all the bodies of water that we have, from inland water hanggang sa ating... Um, uh, papunta sa ating dagat, sa ating salt, uh, sa ating salt ocean, so uh, seas and many more. So in other words, this also include yung urban, rural areas and many more. So it means that we are all interconnected. According sa ating unang speaker here, uh, everything is interconnected in our ecosystem. Okay, so ang ecosystem natin in general itself, it's uh, it's a unit where in all organisms, both biotic and a biotic component are interacting to one another. It means that if ever something happens on that particular ecosystem, all of the things present there, mapabiotic man yan or abiotic, everything will be affected. Okay, so isa sa mag, uh, important na mga ecosystem natin is yung tinatawag natin watersheds. This includes sigset, yung mga inland water, such as yung ating mga lotic ecosystem, mga lentic ecosystem, at kung ano-ano pa along the watershed. So, as you observe here, so this one is a simple illustration or simple data coming from uh, Environmental Monitor 2003, okay? So, this one is cited by WIPA in 2020. So, these are the major watersheds in our country. Mapapansin niyo po, uh, ang ating country as an archipelago, watak-watak na nga tayo because of uh, seas, mag-watak-watak pa ba tayo as a society? Of course not, okay? Hindi natin kailangan gawin yun. But of course, as you observe here, um, all of the things present in our country, okay? Marami dyan bodies of water, sabi nga nung first speaker natin, high endemicity, high biodiversity, mahalaga yan sa atin. Kasi remember, this is a part of it, yung tawag ting likas yaman na meron tayo. Kaya nga, marami talagang mga simula pa lang dati ng mga panahon pa lang ng mga unang conquerors natin, yung mga nag, uh, nagpumuta sa ating bansa, based on our history itself. So, isa sa mga pinaka-greatest thing that is present on our country are ng ating mga natural resources. And of course, bakit pinag-agawan yung mga bagay-bagay sa ating bansa? It's all because ang dami likas yaman tayo dito sa ating bansa. Okay, so uh, punta tayo sa specific nating area here in Cavite. Okay, so sa Cavite itself, meron tayong six major watersheds na makikita. 
So in other words, mataas din ang itawag biodiversity at ecosystem diversity sa ating bans- uh, sa ating uh, lalawigan sa Cavite. So this include yung Baco or River watershed, okay? So somewhere here sa malapit sa Manila, okay? kasi usually it's connected here, malapit sa Baco or Bay, then we have the Imus River watersheds, San Juan River watershed somewhere here in Novoleta, Tenyos River is in uh, Tanza. Labak River, somewhere ang drainage niya is papunta sa ating Naik. Okay? Then of course, yung Maragondon watershed, somewhere in Maragondon. Upland Cavite na po ito. Pero usually, everything that is on Upland Cavite, interconnected po yan papunta sa ating coastal areas natin here. Okay? So, this is yung pinaka-list lang po ng mga major rivers sa Cavite. So, according to Penroth, okay, sabi sa data, coming from Penroth. So, as I've said, this is yung ating anin na major uh, watersheds that we have here from Bacoa River to Inus River, San Juan River, that ilang ilang river. This two is connected somewhere in um, mag, merong intersection nag nagbimitong dalawang river na to. Then we have Kenyas River, Labak River, and of course Margondon River. So it means that yung ating nalawigan sa pag uh, in Cavite, mataas talaga yung diversity rin natin doon. And of course we also have this thing called watershed na talagang bigyan natin din ng emphasis when you talk about uh, protection and rehabilitation itself. Bago nga pala lahat, ha, uh, iba po yung tinatawag natin conservation from rehabilitation. Conservation means pinapanatili natin or uh, pinoprotection na natin yung natitira natin mga resources that we have. So we are conserving things for the future itself. So mga likasyama natin, things talaga na talaga na kailangan natin conserve. Rehabilitation naman po, ibig sabihin naman, uh, we do things to cope up dun sa nawala. So we recover yung mga, parang nire-replenish natin or nire-recover, tulungan natin maka-recover yung mga particular things na kailangan natin conserve. So magkaiba po talaga yung term na conservation from rehabilitation. Okay? So what would be yung pinaka-importance ng tinatawag natin yung watershed? Okay? So when you talk about watershed, mahalaga talaga siya kasi remember, it is the source of our water. Okay? So from drinking, uh, for, for domestic purposes, okay? so ginagamit natin siya for drinking itself. So for every household activities na ginagawa natin that utilize water and many more. So it means that watersheds as a source of water is very crucial sa atin. Of course, hindi lang naman po for domestic purposes. Malaga rin po yung mga water system natin when you talk about uh, irrigation system. Since remember, how could you uh, do... Um, yung ating agricultural practices if ever hindi natin sila nasusupply ng water. So most of the irrigation processes natin, of course, then, nanggagaling po ito sa ating mga watershed. At the same time, when you talk about industrial purposes, gumagamit din po sila ng water. So hindi naman natin masasabi na yung water na yun kung saan lang nila kinuha yun. Of course, it also came from watersheds that we have. So it means that in general, water uh, watersheds are very crucial. It's an important source of water na. Furthermore, when you talk about uh, another importance of water natin, kailangan natin ng water natin to generate electricity. Most of our electricity nowadays, syempre ang gagaling po yun sa pagsusunog natin ng mga fossil fuel natin or pinatawag natin coal. But regardless of that, in order for us to cope up to the demand ng ating tao, kasi remember, there's what's called supply and demand, in order for us to cope up yung tinatawag natin demand for electricity, we find solutions such as alternative sources of energy such as hydroelectric, geothermal, solar to cope up doon sa demand ng ating community, sa labas electricity. Kaya nga remember, we have yung tinatawag natin mga dams and many more. Ang, ang pinaka, nagkakaroon din naman talaga ng benefit dito, hindi lang naman po talaga, ano, uh, hindi lang naman po ako, or, ano, tayong lahat naman po as humans are, also benefiting on these things. So nga lang talaga, later on, ang pag-usapan natin, may mga adverse effecto sa ating environment. Okay? So furthermore, water, ginagamit din natin siya for recreation and aesthetic value. Ginagamit natin siya to uh, to do yung mga things natin, such as yung mga pag natin, pagpunta natin sa iba't ibang places, to wonder ano ba yung meron sa nature natin at kung ano-ano pa. Okay? So, mapabata, mapamatanda, we are also doing recreation activities sa ating mga bodies of water natin. Kasi remember, this is part of the Tauting ecosystem. We're part of it to be exact. So, in other words, another thing sa ating um, watersheds natin, aesthetic value siya. So, nakaka-appreciate tayo anong bang kagandahan ng mga likas yaman na meron tayo. Kung ano-ano pa. So, kasama rin dito yung mga bodies of water natin. This one, this illustration came from 
uh, this quote is taken in somewhere in uh, Maragodon, if ever I'm not mistaken. So there are uh, places sa ating lalawigan na marami talagang makakita mo talaga ng tiyatawag aesthetic value or yung ma-appreciate mo kung gaano kaganda yung tiyatawag natin nature natin. And of course, when you talk about yung mga indigenous people natin, mahalaga rin po sa kanila yung tinatawag nating bodies of water na yan, or yung mga watershed. Kasi remember, ito yung palang cultural heritage. And remember, indigenous people are also part of yung tinatawag nating likas yaman natin. Parti din natin siya ng ating kultura. So dapat pangalaga din natin yung mga indigenous communities natin. Kasi remember, kapapilipino rin naman natin sila. Okay, another thing, when you talk about uh, importance of water, it's a bodies of water, watershed. Parte din po siya ng tatang economical value natin. Kasi remember, maraming things na makukuha natin when you talk about sa ating mga watershed. One best example is ecotourism. So ecotourism is uh, one way of appreciation yung tinatawag nating likas yaman o kagandahan ng ating mga likas yaman natin. Another thing, there are so many goods na makukuha natin sa ating watershed. This includes yung mga organism na hinaharvest natin from time to time. So such as example, this one, yung ating mga mud crab, marami po yan sa mga estuary ecosystem natin, tulad ng mga mangrove ecosystem and many more. So mapagpukuha na natin sila ng livelihood sa ating uh, mga umayan. At the same time, parte rin po talaga yung ating mga watershed sa ating tiyatawating GDP natin. Yung mga gross domestic products na meron tayo at parte siya ng ating ekonomiya. Another thing, when you talk about watershed, tahanan po siya ng tinatawag nating biodiversity. Ano po ba yung tinatawag nating biodiversity? So yung biodiversity itself is yung gaong gaano ba karaming iba't ibang klaseng species ng organism na makikita doon sa place na yun. We can measure biodiversity in four ways. Number one, genetic diversity. In a sense, kung gaano ba karami ang iba't ibang genetic characteristic ng iba't ibang individual, even though magkakapares na species, there's still variation among them. We have also yung tiyatawating species diversity kung saan nagkakaroon tayo ng iba't ibang klaseng species ng organism. Kasi remember, species are uh, groups of organism na mayroong pare-pare sa karakteristik na kaya mag-produce ng katulad din nila. Another thing, when you talk about another uh, measurement of biodiversity is yung tiyatawating ecosystem diversity. Kasi kahit saan ka pumunta, mayroong iba't ibang ecosystem ka makikita. Umakit ka lang sa bundok or whatsoever, makikita mo na doon na you are facing different ecosystem as you go in all on altitude. Okay, so in other words, in, in our lalawigan sa ating province, sa Cavite, marami ecosystem ka makikita dito. Coming from, uh, magsimula ka sa coastal areas, paakit sa um, high upland Cavite, pagpunta ang Maragundon or Indang, iba-ibang ecosystem ang makipis mo. Another measure ng biodiversity is your functional diversity, uh, functional biodiversity. In a sense that when you talk about functional biodiversity, dito mo na makikita yung interaction ng iba't ibang organisms sa bawat isa. Sama dito yung mga competition, predation, symbiosis, or whatsoever. At the same time, they are affected by the things present on that particular ecosystem. Such as yung tinatawag dating temperature, pH, humidity, climate, at kung ano na pang bagay. So in other words, mga watersheds natin, tahanan po yan ng iba't ibang klaseng biodiversity na meron tayo sa ating bansa or even sa ating lalawigan. Then of course, we can see uh, sa mga watersheds din natin, somewhere in Mindoro, okay, we have also yung mga specific end endemic species natin such as yung ating Philippine saltwater crocodile. If ever you want to compare yung ating Philippine saltwater crocodile with other crocodile that we have, mas maliit di hamak itong Crocodilus mindorensis sa ibang mga ano natin, sa ibang mga crocodile uh, family niya. Okay, so this one is only endemic in our country itong Crocodilus mindorensis. At the same time, when you talk about biodiversity, as I said earlier, meron tayong iba't ibang ecosystem na, of course, they depend on the things that is present on the particular place. Kaya nga, naging kahanan nila yun. Kasi remember, andun yung mga things na gina, uh, kailangan nila, the needs that they want in order for them to survive. And remember, when you talk, of, when you talk about ecosystem, it's up, dinawawala yung dalawang term eh. Habitat, tsaka yung tinatawag natin niche. Yung habitat is yung tirahan ng mga organism kung saan they find their needs, basic needs, in order for them to survive. At the same time, pag sinabi mong niche, ito yung role na ginagampanan ng organism na ito. Halimbawa, let's talk about this mangrove. Kasi yung mangrove itself, as a plant, okay, as a tree, to be exact, or in general, plant na lang, okay? So, malaki talaga ang function nila, lalo na sa coastal areas natin. Isa ito sa mga pinag-aralan ko when I, do, when I conduct my research in bike, uh, in mangrove ecosystems, specifically on its biodiversity. 
dito sa coastal areas Cavite, hindi mo mawawala, hindi mawawala itong mga ecosystem na ito. Yun nga lang, when you talk about this ecosystem, they are really affected by the people present here sa ating coastal area. Hindi naman natin mawawala talaga. Hindi natin mawawala yon. In a sense that where, when there is human, there are also talaga mga things na pwede makapag-cause ng negative impact sa ating environment. But of course, hindi naman lahat lagi negative. There are also things na ginagampanan din talaga ng tao para makarapag-rehabilitate din naman siya ng kanyang ecosystem. Kaya remember, um, it's what you call, um, it's a, it's a, uh, yung ating mga ecosystem to be exact, meron pa yung mga classification yan eh. May mga degraded ecosystem, may mga healthy ecosystem, but of course, meron din tayong mga ecosystem talaga na highly tolerable in a sense that kaya rin nila makarejuvenate. Itong time to time nga lang, it takes time para makarejuvenate sila. Kaya meron tayong term na tinatawag natin ecological succession in a sense that there's a natural way on how organism tend to cook up to the changes na nangyari sa kanila. But of course, dagdaga mo pa ng tulong ng tao, mas mapapabilis natin yung tawag natin ecological succession. So yan isa sa mga pinaka-main role natin as individuals kasi as a homo sapiens, malaga talaga yung mga alam natin, paggamit natin ng teknolohiya, ng kaalaman natin para makatulong din tayo sa ating environment. Okay? So what are the threats sa ating watershed? Actually, I already uh, listed ko lang dito yung mga sa, some of the threats that we have here sa mga watersheds natin. Number one, of course, ito yung mga man-caused or man-driven changes. Kasi remember, when you talk about human, right now we are uh, we are in this era called anthropogenic era in a sense that humans are the one that is already shaping up yung tiyatawag natin ecosystem natin. Bin, uh, sila na yung mismong gumagawa ng mga factor na nakakapagbago ng ating ecosystem. But bakit? Ano ba meron sa tao? Usually ang tao kasi meron sila tinatawag nating capability to create yung tinatawag nating technology. And this technology itself, sometimes it is harmful, sometimes it's not. Okay, kasi remember, lahat naman ng technology may, may pros and cons. So it means that, uh, lalo na, when you talk about industrial revolution ng mga early 1970s to 1980s, malaki talaga yung nagkaroon ng impact nun sa ating environment. Okay? So one of them is yung tinatawag natin illegal logging. So nowadays, meron na tayong mga batas na nagpapanukala talaga to um, prevent talaga yung magkaroon ng pagputol ng mga puno natin. Mga, kasi remember, when you talk about habitat loss, malaking epekto nito sa biodiversity natin. Directly affected din tayo as humans. Then, uh, then another thing, as you observe here, okay, so this one is yung tinatawag nating mga dams na meron tayong in-establish sa mga watersheds natin. Of course, sabi na lang natin ano ba yung pros and cons ng tinatawag nating mga dams natin. Actually, number one, meron tayong sources ng electricity natin. Kasi nga, ren uh, renewable source ng energy yung tinatawag uh, mga hydroelectric uh, natin, mga dams natin. Yung nga lang, once that you establish dams, ang number one na nakaka-apekto na nito is yung tinatawag ng biodiversity ng lugar na yun. Kasi remember, they are greatly affected by the things that is involved sa mga establishment na ito. Okay? So in other words, meron siyang pros, meron din siyang consequences. Furthermore, yung tinatawag natin um, yung mga ginagawa talaga ng tao dun sa kanyang environment, such as yung paglalagay na kung ano ng establishment sa mga bodies of water natin, when you go to Manila Bay, kitang kita nyo yung mga takungan, mga fish pens, at kung ano na pang mga bagay, malaking factor yun sa environment mismo. It is one of the most uh, important thing that shape yung tinatawag natin pagbabago ng ating ecosystem. Kasi remember, yung mga uh, farms na yun, they use it, utilize as feeds and many more that could really affect yung tinatawag yung microflora, yung tinatawag nating bodies of ecosystem natin, wala na sa mga bodies of water natin. Okay, kaya usually, meron tayong mga involved in sometimes ng red tide. Even though red tide is not caused by fish pens or whatsoever, red tide is a natural phenomenon kung saan nagkaroon ng pagdami ng mga red algae. Kaya nga tinawag red tide in a sense that uh, nag-bloom sila kasi naging favorable sa kanila yung mga condition kaya dumami sila. Another negative impact din po ng mga agricultural areas sa mga bodies of water natin is yung tinatawag natin eutrophication. So eutrophication, tulad din ng red tide, algal bloom din po siya. Tumaas din po yung dami ng mga green algae natin sa mga bodies of water, specifically on areas such as yung mga inland water natin, on ponds, lake, tumaas ang tinatawag nating eutrophication level, tumaas yung tinatawag green algae population. Malaking factor yon sa ecosystem mismo. It can cause oxygen depth. 
sa mga living things that is present on the particular bodies of water and many more. So it means that humans also have something to do with those things. Kasi yung mga sabi nga noong early, anong muna nating ano, speaker, yung mga washed off na mga, mga surface runoffs natin. So some of it came from agricultural areas. So once that you apply fertilizer or pesticide, lalo na pag dumating yung mga heavy rains, nawawash off po itong mga inorganic compounds na to. So tuwang-tuwa ang mga algae na yun pagpunta sa ng mga nutrients na yun dun sa bodies of water, thus causing eutrification itself. So, so mostly, those are man-driven changes itself. Another thing, so yung tinatawag din overfishing or overharvesting, or sama na rin natin dito yung tinatawag natin poaching. Kasi remember, di nawawala yung tinatawag natin poaching. So, punta mo natin sa poaching itself. So, poaching is just sa mga talamak na nangyayari, lalo na sa pagkawalan ng biodiversity natin. Bakit meron poaching? Kasi meron tumatangkilik. So, the more na meron tumatangkilik sa mga sa mga produkto ng mga poachers, the more na umangungwa ang mga poachers ng mga living organisms doon. So, if ever you ever encounter so many things such as those things, just report them. Lalo na dito sa mga incidents na magkaroon ng tinatawag na ting habitat destruction dito sa mga mangrove areas na disposal areas sa Cavite. So, may mga batas na tayo dyan na nagpapanukala na protection na yung mga mangrove areas na meron tayo. So, punta tayo sa overfishing. So, mostly, we have what you call demand on food. And remember, sometimes, because of the technology that we have, yung grabe yung mag-harvest ng fish, hindi na nakakapag-cook up yung mga lamang dagat natin sa pagkaubos nila. Kasi mas maraming nakaharvest kumpara sa mas uh, sa mga napapangana ng mga isdang ito. So, it means that malaking epekto yung tinatawag nating overfishing, specifically sa biodiversity ng isang particular uh, bodies of water na yun. Okay? Kaya remember, uh, kasi remember, yung tatawag yung basic needs din talaga ng tao, yung sinasabi lang natin na may factor din doon sa pagkawalan ng biodiversity natin. Kasi remember, biodiversity, pinipukuha na natin siya ng pagkain natin. Maraming bagay ang binibigay sa atin ng biodiversity in general. Okay? Then of course, some of it, yung tatawag natin mga practices ng ibang mga kababayan natin, such as this one, nakikita nyo sa illustration. Ito po yung mga local miners natin. Actually, hindi naman pagbimina. They are, parang part din sila ng pagbimina in the sense that they are collecting uh, minerals coming from debris, coming from rivers. Bago tingnan nila, baka, baka if ever may mga gold uh, or other minerals na kailangan nila makuha doon. So these things can also alter yung environment natin. Specifically on places lalo na mayroong mga mining activities sa kung ano-ano pa. Okay, another man cause uh, driven changes here. Ito po yung mga end result ng mga mineral uh, um, mining activities in some watershed. So mapapansin niyo po, meron ng tinatawag natin pagka orange, okay, or reddish ng body sa water tsaka ng soil. It means that some of minerals that are being extracted there, nagkakaroon na siya ng oxidation reaction with some uh, of with, with the oxygen itself kaya nagiging medyo re reddish to orange na siya. Kasi remember sa pagbimina, in order for you to harvest those minerals na kailangan mo makuha doon, kailangan mo gumamit ng mga chemical agent or yung natawag yung mechanical agent. Ano na chemical agent? Para ma-separate po yung mga essential minerals with, our, uh, with the ore. Yung ore po yung bato na merong mineral. Kasi it's when you talk about rock, andun yung mineral mismo. So para ma-extract mo yung mineral, kailangan mong gumamit ng chemical agent or mechanical agent para madurog yung pinakabato at ma-extract ang mineral mo doon. Some of it, lalo yung mga waste material niya, napapasama yun sa ating environment. So remember yung discharges coming from these mining activities, yun ang mga negative impact talaga doon sa areas na yun. Okay? Another thing, such as example, when you talk about extracting gold, so gumagamit sila ng mercury. So mercury is a heavy metal, napapansin nyo naman yung tinatawag natin bioaccumulation at kung ano na pang mga factors sa environment natin na pwedeng maging part siya ng food web ng ecosystem natin, malaking epekto rin naman sa atin. Okay? Simple siya. Another thing, okay, another threat sa ating watershed is yung tinatawag ito yung pollution. So, hindi na bago sa inyo yung term na pollution. Ito yung pag add natin ng mga materials, specifically foreign materials, sa ating mga bodies of water, sa ating atmosphere, sa ating land, or either sama na rin natin dito yung light, kasi light pollution, there's light pollution also. Malaking epekto nito when you talk about the circadian rhythm or the biological rhythm, uh, biological daily activities of, 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 of organisms. Sama mo rin dito yung noise pollution. Pero in this particular illustration, pinapakita po dito na kung saan mayroong tao, there's what you call pollution. Kahit saan naman makikita mo ito. Okay, some, some of my students ask me, Sir, may pag-asa po po ba yung Manila Bay? Of course, yes. May pag-asa ang Manila Bay. 
you cannot consider Manila Bay as a dead ecosystem. May buhay pa rin dyan. Yun nga lang mga tolerable organism na sila. Sila yung mga organism na kaya i-tolerate yung mataas na, um, mataas na quantity ng certain factor na hindi kaya ng ibang organism. Kasi remember, we have sensitive organism and of course, we have also tolerable organisms in general. So usually, Manila Bay, in, um, malaki, marami pa tayong pwede magawa sa Manila Bay as an individual. Yun nga lang, as I've said, if there's human habituation, there's what you call uh, increased uh, discharge of these materials sa ating environment or increased pollution doon sa ating ano. Hindi lang naman sa Cavite galing ang mga basura sa Manila Bay. It also came from nearby provinces such as Manila and Bataan within the Manila within Manila Bay. So you cannot blame only Cavitenos for the, deg the degradation ng ating Manila Bay. Pero as I've said, buhay pa po ang Manila Bay. There's still hope. Okay? We can do something. Okay, lalo na uh, when you talk about rehabilitation of our Manila Bay. As you observe in Manila, mapapansin nyo po, there's uh, yung dami yung pagtapon talaga ng debris in different places talaga. Okay? So, ito isa sa mga malalaking problema talaga, lalo na sa mga urbanized area. Isa sa mga nakikita ko rin po based on mga studies na napunta ko rin po together with my students because they're doing their thesis, makikita rin po natin pag if ever you go to places such as yung mga coastal areas natin, kitang-kita niyo po talaga gaano ba kalaki yung epekto ng tao, lalo na when you talk about uh, environmental uh, issues sa tulad ng pollution at kung ano-ano pa. Okay, as you, also, as you observe here sa somewhere in Pasig, so meron din tayong mga tolerable organism na dumadami doon, such as yung ating mga uh, water hyacinth at kung ano-ano pa. But regardless of that, share ko lang sa inyo mga water hyacinth na yan. May mga good factor din nga, din yan sila, pero yung nga alam, may mga negative impacts din sila, such as they clog yung ating mga um, flowing water ecosystem, tulad ng mga river, tsaka ng mga stream, malaking factor po yun. Sometimes, they crop din yung mga foreign debris at kung ano-ano pa. Then of course, because of this uh, pollution na makikita natin sa ating ecosystem, yung mga natitira po is yung mga tiyatawag nating highly tolerable organism. Tulad ng ating mga janitor fish. Nung ating, so, so ito, this one is more on um, freshwater ecosystem. Ito sila. Ito yung mga aspagong. If ever you're familiar with it, Chinese uh, shock, soft shell turtle. So sila po ay mga invasive organisms. Usually, di naman talaga sila nakatira doon sa place na yun. So someone uh, introduced them, pero naging highly tolerable sila. Meron silang characteristic that makes them very uh, tolerable on those characteristics doon sa mga places na meron tayo. So ito yung recently lang, nung nagkaroon ng dolomite issues and many more. Ito po yung black chin tilapia. If ever you go to coastal areas Cavite, or sa Manila Bay, marami talaga to sila. Iba po sila dun sa tinatawag nating native tilapia. Even though yung native tilapia natin, yung native tilapia is also not uh, a native species sa atin. Hindi po native talaga sa ating uh, native tilapia, yung black na tilapia na ginagamit natin for our daily cuisines. So usually, ano rin po sila, mga cultured na mga farm na mga isda. Pero hindi talaga sila native sa atin. But ito, napakarami nito kasi grabe itong mga anak at the same time, uh, they have the characteristic that enable them to survive on conditions na hindi kaya ng iba. So this one is yung titawating tilapia, yung Gloria, or yung titawating um, black chin tilapia. Okay? Then of course, because of pollution, tumataas din po yung coliform content ng ating mga bodies of water na talagang really harmful din talaga sa other people, uh, sa mga tao na nakatira doon sa nearby ecosystem na yon. So in other words, hindi lang po yung mga organism yung apektado, also kasama rin dito yung mga tao. Okay? Another threat when you talk about yung sa ating watershed is yung land development natin. Kasi remember, when you talk about land development, ang pinakamain priority naman talaga din natin dito is yung tinatawag pag-asenso ng ating, ano eh, ng ating bansa in general. Yun nga lang, ang nasa alang-alang dito is yung ating biodiversity. Kasi remember, ang pinakamayang priority talaga natin nowadays is siyempre tao talaga. But of course, dapat hindi rin talaga mawala yung tinatawag natin uh, environmental awareness din natin na mahalaga rin naman yung ecosystem natin. Since remember, basic needs are also obtained from this ecosystem itself. Okay? So land development is another factor po. Yung pag-shift natin from forest area to agricultural areas. Afterwards, yung agricultural areas, it will be converted to uh, uh, urban areas such as subdivisions and many more since hindi na siya nagagamit. So in other words, kailangan talaga natin bigyan ng emphasis talaga on how to 
could we utilize yung mga area, uh, land areas na meron tayo. So this one is one of the, uh, ito, alam na alam to ng mga kabataan dito sa Cavite City. Ito yung kitang kita natin here sa kanya, uh, kanya Kau Bay, kung pumunta kayo dito. So makikita po natin na uh, dati, noong 2000 something, uh, Island Cove is covered with mangrove ecosystem. Yet, of course, because this is a private area, it has been sold to foreign uh, investors at now it's been converted into pogo areas. So, of course, malaking impact din ito sa ating, uh, sa ating Manila Bay. In a sense that when you talk about mangrove ecosystem, they're just like coral reef area natin kung saan nag-spawn din yung ating mga uh, animals natin such as yung mga isda natin, mga lamang dagat, crustaceans, at kung ano na pa. So, they depend on these things. And then, of course, because uh, it's a privately owned, so, binenta siya. So, malaking impact nito, lalo na sa Manila Bay natin. So, I guess this one is a factor, very big, big factor talaga sa pag-shape ng ating Manila Bay ecosystem natin. Then, of course, another threat when you talk about our watershed area is yung tinatawag natin climate change. Share ko lang sa inyo na very, uh, very rapid banner na lang para matis mabilisan tayo dito sa ating discussion. So, yung tinatawag natin climate change is yung uh, pagbabago ng ating klima. Okay, actually, nagbabago naman talaga ang klima natin from time to time. Yun nga lang, climate change na accelerate natin siya because may mga pagbabago na nangyari sa ating um, atmospheric condition natin. One best example, when you talk about greenhouse effect. Kasi remember, greenhouse effect is the number one cause of this thing called climate change. So yung greenhouse effect is cause ng pagdami ng greenhouse gases natin sa ating atmosphere. Eventually, greenhouse gases, greenhouse effect, Kaya nagkaroon ng buhay sa planeta natin is because of that. Yun nga lang, because of human activities, industrialization, mas napabilis natin ng pagdami ng greenhouse gases natin sa atmosphere natin na nagkaroon ng tinatawag natin adverse effects sa atin or napa-accelerate natin climate change. Remember, greenhouse effect is the number one cause of global warming. Ano ba yung global warming? Kasi remember, when you talk about greenhouse effect, pag tumama yung solar energy natin from our, from our sun, so some of it will bounce back. So, because meron tayong tatawating pagkakapal ng greenhouse gases natin dito, some of the heat, hindi na siya bumabalik sa, at, uh, sa outer space natin. So, natatrap siya sa loob ng ating planeta. Causing yung tatawag natin green, uh, uh, global warming. And this pag-init ng ating pl uh, planeta could lead to what's called climate change. And remember, marami na rin talaga nangyaring climate change talaga all throughout the life of humans or living things sa ating planeta. Actually, siya yung isa, isa sa mga greatest factor na contribute sa Mass, ex mass extinction ng iba't ibang organisms sa different era that we have when you talk about evolution itself is geological era natin. Isa siya sa mga nag-cause ng tinatawag nating um, yung tinatawag nating uh, mass extinction. Okay? But of course, right now, maybe isa, sa, isa siya sa mga kinakatakutan talaga na pwede mag-result ng tinatawag nating mass extinction din ng mga species because of the action of this uh, climate change itself. Okay? Doon tayo tayo ting epekto na dulot sa atin ng industrialization natin. Okay? So, climate change could lead to extreme weather pattern such as yung mga malalakas na bagyo okay? na nararanasan natin nowadays. Even though typhoon is natural, some of it are very devastating. Malaking epekto nito, lalo na sa society natin at of course sa ating mga uh, ecosystem natin. Some of places sa ibang, bansa, sa ibang mga bansa or sa ibang lugar sa ating lalawigan can experience severe drought. So, so severe drought can cause yung tatawag natin famine or tagutong in other places na malaking epekto talaga sa atin, lalo sa mga basic needs natin such as food. Then of course, from time to time, makaka-experience tayo ng mga grabing mga bagyo at kung ano na pa when you talk about climate change. And of course, there's what you call emergence of several diseases na pwede ma-trigger din talaga or natitrigger din talaga siya ng tinatawag natin climate change. Such as example, yung pamangalakas na ulan, afterwards, is, uh, grabing mainit na condition, favorable po sa mga uh, disease-carrying mga organism natin tulad ng mosquito na pwede siya magkalat ng mga infection or pathogen. Or they can spread pathogen okay, sa ating community such as malaria, dengue at kung ano-ano pa. Hindi lang po mga lamok at kung ano-ano pa pwede mag-emerge when you talk about climate change. There are so many zoonotic diseases that may emerge from time to time pag nagkaroon tayo ng tetawag yung continuous gradual change ng ating mga ng ating klima. So, ang tanong, ano pa ang pwede natin gawin? Alam na natin kung ano ba yung important sa ating mga ating mga ating mga ating mga ating mga ating 
karon tayo ng tinatawag tayong ecosystem approach. So usually, pag sinabi tayong ecosystem approach, integrated uh, process siya, okay, or integrated uh, strategy siya na nagpo-promote ng tinatawag natin conservation at sustainability use ng ating mga resources na meron tayo. So actually, when you talk about ecosystem approach, meron tatlo tayong uh, major important things na involved here. Number one, of course, you must involve people. Okay? How could you make people involved to environmental things that we have? Give them information. So once that these people are informed, they could do something. Okay? Or even those who say, "I don't know what I'm going to do as a kid," or "I don't know what I'm going to do as a man anymore." There are many things you can do. You don't even know. You have the niche that you have. You have the role that you have. You really have the role. Uh, nagagawa mo na siya, pero you think na hindi siya parte talaga ng tinatawag natin uh, para involvement mo. Actually, involvement mo siya sa ecosystem natin. Okay? So, it means that uh, yung involvement ng tao is mahalaga when you talk about ecosystem approach. Number two, you must understand how nature works. Ibig sabihin, paano ka magiging involved kung hindi mo alam paano ba, nangyay ano ba nangyayari sa ecosystem mo? Ano ba meron sa environment mo and many more? So you must be knowledgeable. Hindi man highly knowledgeable na ma masaulo mo yung mga terms or whatsoever. Ang malaga, alam mo kung paano ba nag-work yung mga bagay-bagay sa nature natin in general. You must have the ideas about, ah, ito yung, pag ito yung bagay na to or whatsoever and many more. Diyan papasok yung tinatawag nating research at kung ano-ano pa. Kasi remember, when you talk about research, you are, you are um, naghanap ka ng bagay na gusto mong malaman. And from these things, you involve your thing to, uh, to this particular uh, uh, factor na gusto mong ma-involve, lalo sa environment natin. Then of course, once that you are highly knowledgeable, you are already involved, magkakaroon ka ng tinatawag value na, nababalue mo na kung gano'n ba kalaga ang nature mo. Pansin ko yan sa mga kabataan nowadays, masyado na talaga silang uh, involved when you talk about environment itself. Tamang, magandang mga kaya. Ako, ito ang tuwa ako sa mga kabataan nowadays that they are learning to be involved lalo na sa environment natin. Kasi napapractice nila yung pagiging nagbibigay sila ng information dissemination, napapractice nila yung tinatawag ng karapatan nyo as an individual. At the same time, nadidisseminate ko rin po yung information sa ibang tao kung gano'n ba kalaga ang iyong ecosystem. So in, my, in other words, in general, ecosystem approach is one of the most important key role lalo na magkaroon tayo ng involvement sa ating uh, pangangalaga ng ating ecosystem. Next, of course, ang pagsunod natin sa batas natin. Okay? Kasi remember, um, as a society itself, as a person living in a society, in a community, we are, um, nandito tayo sa tetawiting, parte tayo ng lipunan natin. And of course, we must follow the laws. Okay? Yung environmental laws natin. We must implement rules and regulation natin. Sa pagsunod natin yung batas natin, tulad ng mga NIPAS Act. Actually, ito, 1992 pa itong NIPAS Act na to And because of the uh, uh, ratification of this NIPAS Act, nagkaroon na tayo ng involvement natin on how to rehabilitate and conserve the remaining uh, forest that we have sa ating ecosystem. As I remember, isa to sa mga role din na hindi nyo rin alam na ito rin yung role na ginagampanan natin. Yung pagsunod, simple yung pagsunod lang natin sa batas natin na ito yung mga role na ginagampanan natin sa ating ecosystem. Next, of course, rehabilitation of the forest reserves and protected areas. So, andito po yung involvement ng mga society, ng mga community, ng mga NGOs and LGUs, ang pag-gather ng data. Siyempre, malagay yung gathering ng data bago ka gumawa ng tinatawag ng mga extension activities natin. As I remember, mahirap kasi talaga mag-create ka ng tinatawag ng extension activities when you do not have any uh, data coming from research and many more. Kaya mahalaga talaga ang research in general. So remember, ito yung mga rehabilitation practices. Oo nga, uh, sabi na natin, from 1970 to 2010 or 2020, malaki ang nagbago sa dami ng mga uh, areas na meron tayo, mga forest natin. Kasi remember, dumadami rin talaga ang population natin. Yet of course, syempre mapapansin din natin na meron din talaga tayong initiative na ginagampanan din natin ang role natin sa ating ecosystem. And yun ang isa sa mga pinakamagagandang mga things na nakikita ko nowadays. We involved in these things, lalo na sa ecosystem, ano natin, ecosystem approach natin sa ating mga uh, likas yaman natin. So, and of course, ito yung involvement natin. Kasi remember, as Filipinos, if ever we act in general as a community, malaking magagawa natin in general. Kasi remember, hindi kaya ng isang tao lang ang mga bagay-bagay, lalo na yung tayo tawag natin ecological or environmental awareness. Dapat tulong-tulong tayo to do things. Kaya nga, sabi ko sa mga estudyante ko pag lagi, 
we involve things, lalo na sa paggawa na tinatawag ng environmental research. As remember, when you practice research itself, you gain data from those things and you create things from that particular data that you already obtained. Kaya remember, lalo na sa mga kabataan nowadays, mahalaga talaga na you conduct research. Kasi yung data na makukuha mo rito, ito yung makakatulong para masolusyon na natin yung mga bagay na na-discover natin doing research itself. And in general, we practice cooperation. Okay? Cooperation is a must. Okay? Kasama na rin dito yung pagiging good natin in general as uh, syempre sa inyo mga kabataan, sa society natin, we uh, we also help yung ating government sa mga projects nila. Even though, sabi na natin, hindi naman lahat talaga is masasatisfied sa gawain ng government natin. Yet, what are we if ever wala tayo, wala yung government natin? We still support our government. Kasi remember, isa ito sa mga greatest ano rin natin eh. Parang hindi natin sila adversary, hindi natin sa kalaban. Isa rin ito sa mga tumutulong sa atin. Imagine that... Um, Oh, not everyone is satisfied in things na nag involved nowadays. But regardless of that, ando pa rin dapat, dapat yung pagiging ano natin, social, ano natin, parang social involvement natin sa individual. Tutulungan din natin ang ating government in doing their uh, works. Kaya hindi lamang po lahat negative sa environment, uh, sa ating government. May mga positive things din na po talaga na ginagampanan ng government ang kanilang mga trabaho. Okay? So mga kabataan, please be involved po talaga not only sa pagbabatikos, but also sa pagtulong din, pag-spread ng information sa ating ibang kabataan, tsaka sa mga hindi rin talaga nakakaalam sa mga bagay-bagay ngayon. Kaya nga remember, uh, knowledge talaga is, a power, is power itself in the sense that you provide information to others at the same time, because of the information that they gather from you, nagkakaroon na sila ng involvement, lalo na sa pag-conserve at rehabilitate ng ating environment in general. So, to sum it up, in general, um, Ito yung mga references ko. Um, uh, to close my, uh, ano, to close my uh, talk here sa webinar, thank you nga pala ulit dito sa mga organizers natin. At of course, um, thank you, uh, you give me an opportunity na makapagtalk sa mga kabataan kasi sa to sa mga role ko bilang teacher para mag-provide ng information dito sa ating kabataan about the importance sa ating environment. Bago ko tapos yung aking speech, uh, mga kabataan na uh, COVID-19 is real. Okay, wag muna kayong magkalat-kalat sa alsada or whatever. Make sure that you were safe, you were uh, highly um, aware na yung virus andyan siya. Okay, so if ever alam naman natin na you're not highly susceptible on the virus itself, even though kasi malakas yung kap katawan mo, make sure na isipin mo rin yung mga mahal mo sa buhay na susceptible dito. Kasama rin dito yung mga kapwa-tao mo rin na pwede rin mag involved din talaga na makakuha rin ng tiyatawag natin disease na yun. So remember ha, let's just wait in 2021 na maging available yung vaccine natin. A vaccine is already there. But of course, ang mahalaga is we'll wait for that particular no, bago maging normal ang lahat. Kasi remember, COVID-19, andyan na talaga siya. Hindi na siya mawawala. So maging knowledgeable, maging aware na still, andun pa rin yung pinaka-threat sa atin sa labas. So, huwag masyadong gumagala at kung ano pa, lalo this Christmas season po. Thank you po and salamat po. Okay, thank you for uh, the opportunity.